So this is a little bit different panel that we're going to be doing. We kind of have a presentation and, um, and we'll be talking as well. One of our members, who's also a member of the Keyflow Steering Committee um, and our working groups is Johnny George. He's with Nutanix, longtime um, community member. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here with us today, but he did help us um, in the making of the, the slide deck and, and does an excellent job um, on the working groups and committees that he's with. And now, if you all will introduce yourselves. Absolutely. So, hi, everyone. My name is Andre. I'm also part of Qflow Steering Committee, and I've been in this community for almost six years. So just from the beginning, I saw the transitions um, from Google project to open project to CNCF. And I'm so excited to see so many people on this summit. I think it's one of the most, um, like one of the biggest summits we have for the last six years. So I'm happy to be part of KubeCon community and be here. So. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Yuki. Uh, I'm reading uh, Q4 Auto ML and training with Andre and John. Uh, also, uh, I'm a Kubernetes batch tracking group core member and uh, I'm a Kubernetes Q maintainer. Uh, thank you. So our components that we're gonna be looking at today, and as you've also got a sneak peek of one of the announcements that's coming. It's not on this slide, but the Spark operator as well. So we have training operator, cat tip, and the MPI operator. Um, and so we'll take a look at, at those today. And I don't know if you guys want to stand the whole time or if you want to sit, but um, there you go. Yeah, I can stay. Thank you, Amber. So, so yeah, as Amber said, we're going to speak about cat tip and training operator during the session. And just to remind everyone, um, as you saw in the previous demos, KDP is a project was dedicated to do hyperparameter search in cloud native way. So the idea is to connect this open source ML AI research libraries like Hyperopt, Aptuna, Scikit-Learn to Kubernetes and build this kind of like, you know, layer between uh, Kubernetes infrastructure and the ML libraries like building the SDKs, building web UIs, and building an API access. And KTIP has like several features like parameter search, uh, architecture search, um, also like some experiment tracking, workflow tuning optimization, and additional uh, UI capabilities. Here we can move on. Uh, so this is architecture. We try to, again, we hear you. We try to address the problem with documentation. We try to improve our documentation. And this is how architecture of KTIP looks like. From the user perspective, users just need to use the Qflow Python SDK where they can define what they want to optimize, how they want to optimize, what search algorithm they want to use, and what, how, many, how much resources they have, how many GPUs they have, uh, how many trials they want to use, and then again, just use Python SDK to start the experiment. And inside the KT, we have three different controllers. So the first one, experiment, which is responsible for experiment CR, custom resource suggestion controller, which is spawns algorithm service. The algorithm service produce hyperparameters, and these hyperparameters uh, go all the way to the trial controller, which you with just uh, does evaluation on top of the um, different custom resources. Like we support batch jobs, Argo workflows, Python jobs, so we can orchestrate any type of custom resource on top of Kubernetes, which can do your much more sophisticated uh, hyperparameter tuning experiment. And then at the end, we're collecting trials, uh, trial metrics all the way to KTIPDB and going back to the our evaluation step. So this is native kind of hyperparameter tuning optimization uh, uh, flow and we try to re-implement it using the native Kubernetes infrastructure. Yep. Uh, so in our 2024 roadmap, we're looking for several items. I think the first one, as we saw before in the presentations, we try to we try to be more closer to newest LLM capabilities. So we recently implemented new train API to fine tune your LLM. So we try to actually have a tune API, which easily can fine tune your LLMs, and I will speak about it a little bit later. Also, we try to gradate Katip to V1. Uh, we recently uh, did some features, but we still need to some work to be done. Like we want to, like for example, uh, define new API. So this is some proposed, uh, you know, API name is like Tuner Model Search. Support more things from like you know feature engineering or model compressor. So we think about how we can make this API composable. Also, we want to support push-based metrics like using the, some Python SDK, support more parameter distribution like lock, lock uniform, what like Aptuna, for example, is doing. And we have one integration, some integration with Jupyter Notebooks because it's like the main tool for Qflow users who interact with these components. Uh, 
So, and then let me jump to training operator. Just a reminder, training operator similar to Katip is the framework which connects these deep learning libraries and ML libraries with Kubernetes infrastructure by, uh, util by utilizing Kubernetes APIs and also Python APIs. And training operator has several features like distributed training capabilities where you can run several workers on multiple GPUs uh, with a really large scale and we saw from the user story that actually people using this for very large scale experiments like train your LLM from scratch. Uh, also we support a lot of like all reduced type of training. We also have MPI operator capabilities for HPC tasks like high performance computing. We supporting some different job scheduling and elastic training also there because we're kind of native to PyTorch libraries. Um, yep. So this is like example of what you can do with training operator. This is a, like the thing is how you can do all reduced type of training with PyTorch and training operator will be responsible to actually set up that. So if, I'm, if you're familiar with PyTorch, the PyTorch has the Torch Run CLI, which helps you to spin up these workers. And we basically spin up all of the workers for you by using this operator. And from the user perspective, similar to Katip, they just set how many GPUs they have and they can start this PyTorch job from the function. I will show you in the demo how easy it is to do. And the idea is like training operator will be responsible to spawn these trials and they're going to uh, then share the gradients between them to average them and actually train the model on multiple workers. Because if your model is too large, you need to distribute your model between workers and you distribute your data. Um, so this is one example of how we can use all reduce within training operator. And if we go next slide, here an example how we can use TensorFlow distributed. So this is just one of the example of what you can do within Kubeflow. And the idea is like in TensorFlow, you can distribute your data across multiple workers and Kubeflow training operator will be responsible to schedule appropriate workers, set up appropriate environments, and then um, you can train very large models um, on multiple workers and using multiple GPUs. And the parameter server will be responsible to uh, generate new weights based on, based on the gradients results from all of your workers. Um, yeah, so right now I really want to speak about simplicity. And we hear a lot today that, hey, Qflow is a great tool, but it's complex, right? We want to simplify this. And we hear you and we did some work in the last year to simplify the complexity of Kubernetes for specifically for AI ML community. And how we do this, uh, we, yeah, if we, if we, we, want, we try to have this kind of user flow. So the idea is we have data, science, uh, data, data scientists who really want to, so they really want to work inside Jupyter Notebooks. They don't want to leave Notebook and they, do, they want to do everything inside Notebook. So they start a Notebook server, they code their training there or training scripts or tuning scripts. Then they set how many, like how much resources they have. And then they do use some SDKs of APIs to actually schedule it on top of scale it on top of Kubernetes infrastructure using the Kubeflow capabilities. Uh, so this is from the user perspective how it looks like from the flow perspective. And if we go next slide, here how it looks like from the API perspective. So on the left side you can see that this is native PyTorch uh, distributed API. So basically. If you're familiar with PyTorch, usually you say, hey, I want to use distributed at a parallel with, for example, NCCL, like NVIDIA Collective Communication Library backend. Um, I want to attach my model to distributor. I want to set up my optimizer and I want to train my model, right? So the idea is like using native PyTorch API and then scale this function using the create job API on the Qflow environment. So similar to KFP, if you're familiar with Qflow pipelines, lightweight Python components, we try to give a user a simple Python API, which they can use to scale this function across multiple workers. And we're going to serialize this function uh, for you. Similar to Katip, you just pass this function in the tune API, where you define your objective, your hyperparameters, uh, the trial threshold, and the resources like GPUs and other metrics. So very simple, very Pythonic, no Kubernetes, no YAMLs, no Docker, just a pure Python from your notebook. So yeah, so right now, I just wanna give you a quick demo. And as you saw recently, like previously, um, we've been speaking about, a lot about LLMs, right? And how important they are for industry, for ML community right now. And recently, community did some effort to simplify fine tuning for Qflow users and uh, actually integrate a new tune, a train API. So I hope my de demo is going to work. So <laughs> the thing is like, uh, this is a notebook. Uh, in this notebook, what we're actually gonna do, we're going to fine tune BERT. 
So if you're familiar with uh, BIORT, it's actually uh, called bidirectional um, encoder represent representation from transformers, like one of the most famous LLMs which was developed by Google. And we will try to fine tune it on Yelp preview data set. So this example is similar to like some hugging face examples that you saw in the, in the internet. So uh, we try to adopt those examples using the Qflow training operators. So in this notebook, what we're going to do first, uh, first of all, we're just going to download some samples from our data set. So here we're using the hugging phase data set to load some data and check some results. So the data set contains some Yelp preview results with some stars. So basically label indicate uh, what is the star user gave. And here we have a text. So this is the data set we're going to use. And then we probably, we just need to define our training script to fine tune the model. So just to speed up this experiment, let me submit it on the cluster first. So the idea from the, from the data, science, from data scientist perspective, they just need to define this training function where they just going to use native hugging face transformer APIs. So if you're familiar with hugging face, this should be very simple for you to understand. The idea is like you kind of use this kind of, you know, uh, from pre-trained API where you take the bird model then we're going to um, use tokenizer from this model. We're going to download data set. Then using the mapping to uh, adjust our tokenizer for this EL preview data set. Uh, here we're going to distribute our data because the main uh, power of Kubeflow, it actually can distribute your data across multiple workloads. So rank and world size is the parameters that we're going to use to define which worker it is running, this, this script is running on, and how many workers we have. So we distribute our train and test data set, uh, and then we define the training arguments. So this is again native hugging face trainer arguments where you can say, hey, I want to like uh, evaluate my epochs, I want to um, output my trainer inside test train function. I also can, for example, like uh, have some model uh, checkpoints if I want, and I can define my trainer here. So again, native to hugging face trainer, which can evaluate my training function. Uh, and then at the end, we use trainer.train and we're exporting model all the way to S3 so we can do additional evaluations. So this is the function that user defined inside the notebook. And the thing is like, we are gonna use this create job API to scale this function on the multiple workers. So this will run not inside my notebook, but inside the Kubernetes environment. So here you can see the training function, you can see the job name, you can see the parameters that can pass, like the bucket name, uh, the resources. So I'm going to use one GPU and four CPU for every of my workers. So in total, it's like three, G three GPUs I'm going to use to fine tune my LLM. So this is the packages I'm going to install. So if you're familiar with pipelines, look like similar, like we have these packages to install, we have this kind of a create job uh, function and looks similar. So I've already created this, so right now we can consume our Python job conditions. So we can see that the job is running right now. Uh, we can see that since we're running this on three workers, we're actually using three different pods. So Python, like training operator, will schedule three pods for you, like one master, two workers. And we also can consume in my notebook the logs. So if we check the logs here, we can see that we download our BERT model, we map our review data set to BERT tokenizer, and then we actually start training. So this model is actually using 108 million parameters to train it. And then we do training, we do evaluations, uh, we run it several, uh, several times, and, and then we're just exporting model all the way to S3. So then me as a data scientist, I just want to download my model to check the evaluations. So I'm, going, I'm not going to run this because it will take time. My model, like its size is around 400 megabytes. Um, just to show you like evaluations, like from the evaluation perspective, um, I'm again using the Hugging Face API to pass my model to the pipeline and checking what kind of output it's going to produce. So I'm passing like the one of the good reviews and one of the bad reviews. So do some uh, text, um, uh, sentiment analysis type of task. So as we can see, if I pass like good review, it actually give me the good star. If I passing the bad review, it gives me the bad star. So here it's, I actually fine tuning LLM using Qflow training operator. It's very simple, very Pythonic, pure to notebooks. I don't use any Docker files or any YAMLs. And this is how easy it is to do. So what is next, right? Um, how make it even more easy, right? Like usually data scientists, they want to iterate quickly. 
they want to fine tune their model much faster without even defining the script. And more importantly, how to distribute the data, right? Because imagine if you use hundreds of workers or hundreds of GPUs, how are you going to download data on these workers? Uh, it is not very straightforward to, for data scientists to do because they need to, you know, create shareable PVC, thinking about other things. And for this kind of purpose, we developed this train API, which actually simplified the um, ability to fine tune LLMs. So I will speak about this on the next slide, but the idea is like uh, user, from a user perspective, they just need to use this new train API, uh, this one. And the idea is like, usually in fine tuning, like fine tuning is basically the ability of how, like the, the, um, uh, the modern way of how people right now train their uh, pre, uh, 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 training the models which already been pre-trained. So instead of like training your model from scratch, you're already checking the model which has been trained on like hundreds of GPUs and try to adopt it on your specific use cases. So in this train API, we say, hey, I have this, this number of workers. I have this number of processes per workers. So if, 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 if you know like in Torch run, you can specify how many processes you want to use per node. Like if you want to use like multi-GPU, multi-worker training. So this also like similar parameters in this train API. So then user define the model provider and the data set provider. So model provider is actually, we supporting right now several model providers. So we've been focused on hugging phase initially where a model, uh, where a user can say, hey, I want to use this model URI uh, and I want to like use this transformer to fine tune my model, right? And also in data set provider, uh, we also support like I believe S3 right now in hugging phase, but we're planning to support more like GCS or any other providers. And from the user perspective, they just need to say, um, I want to use this repo. So this is like the hugging phase repo. And we have some like parameters, like for example, if I just want to use 3000 samples from my data sets, not like the full data set to, find, to do the fine tuning. And then the user just defined the training parameters. So instead of like asking user to define a training function, uh, we kind of like pre-create this trainer for the user where uh, user just can specify the training parameters and like LoRa config. So if you're familiar with the like, recent fine tuning um, technologies, LoRa is like one of the best, um, um, like one of the most efficient way of how you can fine tune the models. So you can specify the LoRa config directly in the trainer parameters. LoRa actually will lock some layers, so it will reduce the number, number of train, trainable parameters for your very large model, so it can significantly uh, reduce the, the cost to train your model, to fine tune your model, sorry. And here is again, like you just, just define your training parameters, you define your LoRa config, you define your resources, and you just submit this job. And at the end, um, as I said, we're kind of like using this storage initializer to download model and to download data set. And we can consume our logs directly in the notebook at the end. So since we used LoRa, uh, number of trainable parameters will be smaller. So it's just 300,000 trainable parameters in this model. And as we can see, we have exactly the same results where my model is being trained and where my, my model is being fine-tuned actually at the end and I can use it for my experimentation. So the new idea is, and if I go back to my slides, um, so the new idea of actually how users can use this new APIs for LLM fine tuning looks like this. So the, as I show you in the demo, user just define what kind of model they want to use, what kind of data set they want to use, the trainer parameters, and the, the number of resources they want to use to fine tune a model, right? So then uh, our orchestration layer looks uh, like this, so we have like a model provider and data set provider, which is responsible to download data from different like resources like Hugging Face or S3. And we kind of distribute this, uh, inform this data across multiple workers using a shareable PVC. So your PVC has to support read only many uh, access, um, um, access mode to distribute data across shareable workers. And we have this trainer, which actually pre-created pre trainer uh, which which actually uh, define like the training loop um, for the user. So user doesn't even need to worry about how to define my training script. So this is very extensible because imagine this can be even applied for not NLP based tasks, but maybe image classification or forecasting. So you can basically define so many different trainers that 
different uh, users, your users or your customers can use. And uh, it's very powerful um, of different kind of support we can offer. So if you want to try this notebook, please follow this example. We already uploaded this, um, uh, this presentation um, on the schedule. Uh, but we're looking forward for your feedback because this, this is a new thing. And we try to extend it to support more features and offer you more capabilities to do the fine tuning within Qflow. So just quickly, uh, so we have this kind of roadmap of uh, offering different capabilities for different projects. Like we already offering this train API for training operators to do LLM fine tuning. Also, we want to offer this tune API to do your LLM tuning. And we also want to extend it all the way to the KSERV. So because the Qflow already has like the underlying infrastructure, which can uh, give us ability to train, tune, serve very large models. And this is kind of unique compared to other like um, things that you can do on the cloud, in the cloud native environment. Yeah, so this here, let me pass it to Yuki so you can speak about Adma. Uh, okay, uh, let me explain uh, what's new in training operators. Uh, since B1.7.0, uh, we have started to Okay, uh, we have started to support support the yeah. okay sub suspend suspend policies. Uh, this feature allows us to stop Kubeflow jobs without uh, removing of jobs. Uh, in the next slide, uh, I will I will introduce the training operator 2024 roadmaps. Uh, the first one is LLM uh, train. SDK API. Uh, uh, as Andre uh, explained in the previous part, uh, recently we implemented uh, it. This API has not yet been released. So we will include uh, this feature in the next training operator version, B1.8. Uh, the second one is uh, extending Python SDK trainer. Uh, currently, uh, we support only Hugging Face trainer. Uh, so we are planning to support other trainers like image classifications and uh, deep speed. Uh, the third one is supporting the uh, JAX frameworks. Uh, currently, uh, we are planning to add a new job type, uh, JAX job. Uh, the fourth one is uh, mitigation of success, uh, accessibility to the data pro preparation step. Uh, in typical environments, uh, data scientists perform fine tuning against downloaded foundation models. Uh, if the model data uh, is so large, like LLM, uh, it can occur to waste significant CPU usage and download time. Uh, currently, uh, our trainer Python SDK allows us to mitigate such issues, uh, as Andre uh, explained previous slides, but uh, we aim to reduce the waste more and more by uh, pro providing accessibility to the data pre-processing phase like Apache Arrow. Uh, the fifth possibility is webhook validation. Uh, the training operator has an internal validation mechanism, but the, this error uh, there are message can be seen by uh, in operator logs. So we are planning to introduce webhook variations. Uh, this feature allows us to notify errors per job creation and uh, bring the better UX. Uh, the last candidate is supporting MPI job B2. Uh, currently, the training operator uh, supports only MPI job B1. And uh, we can use MPI job B2 only via MPI operator. Uh, so we will support the MPI job B2 in the training operator as well. Uh, next, uh, I will introduce uh, MPI operator. Uh, MPI operator is a standalone operator to serve only uh, MPI job B2. Uh, let me pay attention to this diagram to describe MPI operator. Uh, once MPI job is created, uh, MPI operator creates rancher and worker pods and uh, set up header services for worker pods. Uh, after all worker pods uh, completed to initialization, 
uh, the launcher part uh, launches training processes in all worker parts. Uh, as a next topic, uh, let me introduce uh, MP operator new features. Uh, these features are not released yet, but you can use uh, them in the head branch. Uh, the first new feature is MPSCH support. Uh, before, uh, we support the two types of MPI implementation, uh, OpenMPI and Interview MPI. In the next version, B0.5, uh, uh, we start to support MPSCH. Uh, the second new feature is uh, Rancher Creation Policy. Uh, this feature allows us to configure when the MP operator should create a Rancher role pod. Uh, this, this default at, at startup policy is the same as before. Uh, the wait for workers ready policy allows us to create a Rancher pod after the workers get ready. Uh, in general, uh, workers' pods take a long time to start because the container image combined with NVIDIA CUDA are so large size and downloading needs to take a long time. If we use the uh, wait for worker ready policy, uh, we can avoid unnecessary pod recreation. But uh, note that uh, if we use both the wait for worker ready and uh, uh, gang scheduling, uh, it can occur conflict. And then the MP operator will fail to start MP job. The next new feature is uh, run launcher as worker. Uh, by default, uh, the MP operator set up a launcher pod only as a launcher. Uh, when we turn off run launcher as worker, uh, we should uh, schedule a launcher to node with that GPU to avoid consuming uh, GPU node resources. But uh, in the hyperscale environments, like having different networks, such as uh, Ethernet and uh, Infinite Band, uh, it can increase debug uh, difficulty. So it can decrease the difficulty of troubleshooting. Uh, in this slide, uh, let me introduce uh, the 2024 uh, roadmap. Uh, the first possibility is restart policy based on the exit code. Uh, in other frameworks like Python job, uh, we already support this restart policy. So we are planning to support it uh, as well as MPI job. The second is the uh, uh, migration of plain parts to batch VM index job uh, in worker role. Uh, we already created the rancher role via index job, but uh, we still directly create worker posts. Our motivation is supporting all batch VM jobs like these functions. Uh, the last candidate is a multi cluster MPI job dispatching by Q. Uh, by supporting the managed by feature in the MPI job, the same as batch VM uh, job, uh, we can submit MPI job into multi clusters in environments managed by Q. Uh, please join these sessions to understand uh, the multi cluster job dispatching by Q for more details. Okay, okay. Um, so a lot of exciting features from API operator as well. So <laughs> just the last thing, but the most important thing I want to say, huge thank you for everyone who contributed for this release, previous releases. So we try to list the most active folks for the last six months. So there's been a lot of other people who try to contribute. And the most I thinking like piece that users can do to be closer for us is to start contributing code. So we try to identify and recognize folks who are active in the community and who are helping us to build better um, services as, such as Katib, training operator, um, also MPI operator. So huge applause on everyone who have been involved in this um, recent effort around LLMs and other features. And I think lastly, um, I just want to say a few things about the community. And um, as Amber said before, we encourage everyone to get involved in the working groups. 
Uh, we meet regularly for every working group in the community. The community is very open. Uh, we're open to any contribution, so please join the working group calls. Please join the community call. Uh, let us know about your problems. Let us know how we can help you. Also, Qflow has been accepted as a uh, Google Summer of Code project, so we're really excited about all of the students and their participation uh, and looking forward to see more proposals in 2024. Um, also, I want to say, for if you're interested in training, tuning capabilities, please join our Wednesday regular calls and 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, UTC time zone. Uh, we meet regularly. We have a Slack channels on the Qflow Slack right now. And also, like, you can check this developer guides for training operator for Katip. And if you want to contribute, start with goods first issues or help important issues or submit a new proposal so we can review it. Uh, so we, we open in any discussions, any contributions, any new features that you want to propose for these capabilities within Qflow project. So you've got a chance to hear about our training operators, uh, Katib and others. And we want to know um, as Andre was saying, how you could get involved and do those things. But we also want to hear from you all. I think we've got like five minutes, four minutes. So we would really like to hear um, what you would like to see in the inside of these working groups or hear questions that you may have um, for us concerning those. I think we have a question back here. Bringing it to you. One, two. <laughs> Hello, so can I use OpenMPI to um, trigger generalist workloads? Imagine I have a Monte Carlo system already at transfer simulation. Can I use it for that? Because I see this very applied to machine learning, uh, but our needs are, are a bit different in, in the project. No, they can get, okay. uh, thank you for a good question. Uh, so. Yes, so MP operate uh, uh, is not only for uh, machine learning, so uh, we can use uh, MP operator for traditional uh, HPC workloads. Mm. So does it make sense? Yeah, like traditional HPC, can I apply it here? Uh, yes, so uh, MP operator uh, just uh, launch, uh, so uh, SSH, SSH server and uh, setting up a uh, headless service. So uh, uh, you, can, you can start up uh, any programs, mm. uh, okay. no, no restrictions. Uh, yeah, just add on this. It's a good question. So we, yes, ha, yes, ha, uh, we have a users who are actually using API operator for HPC level tasks, not like machine learning, and they're already using this in production. So if you want to reach out, please feel free to reach out to us to ask about this more. Here, try this one. Thanks. Hi, yeah, thank you for the talk. So uh, I see PyTorch community come out, PyTorch X project, it has a Kubernetes scheduler. So how do you compare your training operator with Torch X? Thank yeah, you. It's, it's a good question. So um, I know about TorchX. Uh, so to TorchX is for everyone. It's capability to use PyTorch on any environment with these Ray clusters, Kubernetes, or any other kind of you know, scheduling. So the thing is, like PyTorchX, uh, previously I think it was came from Elastic. So it was came from PyTorch Elastic community, and they were specifically um, focusing on PyTorch. So training operator, and we want to collaborate with uh, PyTorch community to think how we can like consolidate the effort. Because TorchX using the similar techniques as we do, but more kind of like, you know, in Pythonic way. So uh, if we have anyone here in the, from the Torch community and want to collaborate with us, please reach out uh, and we can build better CLI for Qflow users, PyTorch users and moving forward. But our main idea not to lock users to a specific framework because it's like, for example, if users want to use MPI, they're free to do it. If users want to use TensorFlow or DeepSpeed or anything else, we want to give them infrastructure to do this, right? So we don't, don't want to be focused on specific um, uh, framework to run deep learning. Hi, uh, does training a, a operator have a support uh, capabilities of dealing with uh, uh, training that were for some reason um, disrupted? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so it's a good question. So your question is about what if one of the node goes down and are you going to lose the training? Yes, yeah, so because like, your training needs to be stateful. So all of these frameworks offering the checkpoint capabilities when basically you can checkpoint your training on every epoch and you can like export your model all the way to whether it's any blob storage, right? So the, uh, it's it's a good thing to do to avoid overfitting and avoid like a single point of failure, right? Because like if one node goes down, it's actually you will lose your tra uh, training process, right? So also PyTorch offers some fault tolerance capabilities. So we try to investigate them and specifically in PyTorch Elastic. So how PyTorch can gracefully, um, can basically recover your training if one node goes down, but we trying to explore different capabilities there. And we're out of time. Yeah. So. so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, uh, also to Yuki. We're here to answer all of your questions for training, tuning, and other questions about Qflow. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone.